We're here at the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium 2016, and I'm sitting with Dr. John Robertson. Thank you so much for joining us today. Pleasure. So here at SABCS, you're sharing some findings on a phase three Falcon trial. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, what we're showing is that the drug that we're testing for Vestrant 500 actually is significantly better than the current standard of care, an astrazole. And that this should now, I think, change the standard of care as an endocrine therapy for patients with metastatic breast cancer in the first line setting. It gives about a 20% additional benefit in terms of disease control. And that confirms the previous studies that we've seen uh, with this drug. And so I think it makes it the, as I say, the standard of care, the most efficacious drug, endocrine therapy drug in advanced breast cancer. And I think too will make it the choice of treatment as the backbone, the endocrine backbone, if you are going to use a combination treatment. And I think I read in your study that it reduces um, the reduces by twenty percent. Is that correct? Yeah. So that's a, I think an incredible number. Yeah, that was the same number that changed. I was, I was using from tamoxifen to an aromatase inhibitor, mm -hmm. which was about 20 years ago actually, 1996. Wow. Um, it was the first time we used the aromatase. The time we changed from tamoxifen was 2000. So it's almost 15 years since that first jump of 20% reduction mm -hmm. in, in progression. And now we're seeing another 20%. And that's why I think we're going to see this as a changing of the standard of care. Mm -hmm. What we showed, particularly in this study, is that there's an interesting subpopulation in patients who have got non-visceral disease. And they seem to do particularly well. And we're showing that data, and it's still not absolutely clear uh, whether that is a real true finding. And the reason for that is that the study was a retrospective analysis. So you look back and you said, this is a finding we got. Mm -hmm. and we never put quite as much emphasis on that type of finding. But the thing that makes you think it might be a real finding is that we looked to see if you saw the same effect in the previous phase two study, and mm -hmm. you do. Mm -hmm. And so that makes you think it may be a consistent finding. And so this has generated a lot of discussion at the actual uh, session this morning. Um, and you know, I know tamoxifen, a lot of people have very bad side effects mm -hmm. with tamoxifen. Is this trial going to help with any of those side effects? If this becomes a new standard of care, will side effects be lessened at all? I think they'll be lessened compared to tamoxifen. Mm -hmm. In this study, the side effects were similar to the aromatase inhibitor, so they weren't different. Um, over the whole plethora of studies with full Vestrant 500, I think that the profile is as good as, as, good as if not slightly better than the other endocrine agents. So I think this drug is, uh, first of all, it's the most efficacious drug, as I said, and that's what the study tells us. But the side effect profile looks uh, good compared to tamoxifen, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so here in the U.S., you know, we talk a lot about Vice President Joe Biden's Cancer Moonshot Initiative, mm -hmm. and that is encouraging a highly collaborative environment around cancer care. And it's not even just with medical professionals, it's with IT professionals and bringing in a lot of different kinds of professions into the cancer care arena. And I know that you um, also shared a lot of this information at the ESMO conference mm -hmm. a few months back. So I think we're seeing not only in the U.S. a collaborative environment, but a globally collaborative environment. Can you talk to us a little bit about the importance of this kind of global collaboration? Well, I think it's hugely important. One, because people sometimes have different skill sets mm -hmm. and you need to bring those in. You know, maybe a researcher who's looking at a particular aspect of how cancer works, that's one. But second of all, so these studies are global studies. Mm -hmm. This study was done across 150 centres, you know, in many countries across the world. And it's important that all of these uh, different, uh, what we call geographic regions, are represented. So, so that's a really important issue. The other important aspect that you spoke about is IT and that leads into the idea of communication mm -hmm. and I think education is hugely important because for this population of patients 
endocrine therapy is the backbone and the mainstay of treatment. And it would surprise you to know just how different the use of these endocrine agents can be in different countries. And I think that's important that patients in all these countries realise that this is the primary treatment of choice for them. Mm -hmm. um, often in some of these countries, patients have given chemotherapy up front. Well, they, they will need chemotherapy possibly in a future date, but not necessarily at the very beginning. And we've show, you know, we know that and have shown that. Mm -hmm. And so I think education in that sense is also important that um, we, we do that. I think there's two ways in which you can improve patient care, at least two ways. Yeah. One is the obvious one of new drugs here, which is to you know, show you this is a better drug, and that's what we've shown. The second way is to make sure that as many people as possible get the best standard of care. Mm -hmm. And that's not always the case. And so that's a combination of education, availability, and that is part of that global discussion and, and, and information sharing. So I, I agree completely.